The following program is hosted by immature, irreverent, obnoxious, and often disgusting young men. Listener discretion is advised. This time on Nude Clan, where in the world is Ron Perlman? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Woo! to another episode Woo! of Nude Clan, the video game podcast talking about movies this month. Uh, I am Joe. I am Caleb. I am A4. And today we are going to be reviewing the 2020 monster film written, directed, and produced by Paul W.S. Anderson based on the video game of the same name, Monster Hunter. Uh, do you guys remember... Where you were when you saw this? Um, sitting, falling asleep on my couch <laughs> uh, last night. Yeah. yeah, I was sitting in this chair, falling asleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting on my couch. I think I paused the movie to masturbate, and then I. <laughs> <laughs> and I and then you two I were falling then, asleep. Then continued the movie at a certain point. Look, Mila Jovovich is very attractive, but that's a little excessive. I didn't pause it to masturbate at the movie. I think I was just like was annoyed joke. at yes. the movie, and I'm like, "What can I do right now?" And I'm like, "I can touch myself." And so, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I better pause the movie so that I can remember this fucking movie at some point because I have to talk about it. So, do uh, you remember it though? Uh, I don't. I saw I it fucking twelve hours ago. Pretty much, what's in the poster is what's in the movie. Like that image of just like monster sand, Mila Jovovich, and that's pretty Flames. much like two thirds of the movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This is a 2020 monster film. Uh, that came out when uh Nude Clan was going through some <laughs> some troubles, and so y'all never saw the movie. Uh, and so, um, we are now reviewing it quite late, but, uh, it was a more recent, uh, video game based movie, obviously based on the quote world famous monster hunter franchise. Yeah. It had a budget of $60 million. It made $44.5 million in the movie theater. So it, uh, lost money. Uh, it uh, was during COVID, though. It was right, right in the middle of that shit. Uh, it stars Mila Jovovich, Tony Ja, uh, and uh, Ron Perman. Yeah, once uh, again. Once again. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Paul W. Anderson, if you guys don't remember, is uh, the director of the old Resident Evil movie. Not uh, the one we just reviewed. But yeah. And Mortal Kombat. Not the new one, the old one. No, yeah, the old one, so... Mortal Kombat Event Horizon Soldier, which I think that's the one that's supposed to be good, right? <laughs> Resident Evil Alien vs. Predator. I loved that when I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. I mean, I, I, I was did. streaming this to some guys last night, and immediately, like, everyone was so displeased with Monster Hunter. I was like, you want to see, like, a good movie by this guy? And I just loaded up Mortal Kombat. We just watched that, too. Uh are you one of those people? I love the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. It is so dumb. Okay. All right. I can accept the end of that sentence. It's super fun. Like, it's not a good movie, no. but it's thoroughly entertaining to me. Oh, my God, dude. Well, the thing is, we have had years, years of people annoying me from UFF to Nude Clan about like, oh, and friends in high school, you know. Possibly mentally challenged friends in high school <laughs> uh, who were like, no. I didn't know you were friends with Jake in high school. No. Not, yeah, he's the <laughs> only one. Uh, no, so like, oh, no, is it? Uh, Kidding, Jake. Like, uh, that's, the, that's the one good video game-based movie. That's one argument I've heard in my life. Still not true. Uh, and then uh, also, because there aren't any, and then also the other uh, argument being like, being like, oh, yeah, Mortal Kombat's a great movie. And that the sequel sucks. 
And I still stand by, I don't think there's that much of a quality difference between the first one and the second one at all. The hey. one one has Christopher Lambert in it, which is like probably the only thing that is like way better That's about awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. But you but ranked the second one better. I do rank I think it's a better film. That I and I'll be honest, and like as a person who loves kung fu movies, like I can be I can watch like a pretty shitty movie that has some good kung fu in it and I can have a good time. Um but it's a kung fu movie, but it's a sh- like the choreography of the fighting sucks, guys. There's one good <laughs> fight in that movie. The rest of it is like backflips where no one touches each other. And they're like <laughs> corny backflips. And I have no idea of like, why the fuck did anybody consider this like a martial arts classic at all? I think the new Mortal Kombat movie was leagues better than the old one. Leagues. So anyway. Anyway, sorry, my movie opinions are getting out, they're getting out of control. Um, so yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, this is a movie. Um, <laughs> it sure I, is. I, it I bought sure it. is a motion picture. I bought it in HD on Amazon for eight dollars because God forbid they have a rental option on there, which they didn't on the day when I went on there. I'm like, why the fuck can't I rent this thing? Are you sure you bought it on Amazon? Because mm-hmm. it's on our Voodoo. Who bought it on the Voodoo? I don't know. I would have fucking gone through and installed Voodoo on the PS5 and then asked Craig for the password if I had known it would have saved me eight bucks. It's on the Voodoo. Yeah, I had I was no like, idea it was on the Voodoo. I thought Voodoo. you bought it on Amazon. No, I bought it on Amazon, motherfucker. Who the fuck bought it then? Who, like, now it's just on my Amazon. I bet it's just I, on there. I bet technically I <laughs> bought Amazon's it. My Amazon's tainted with this thing. <laughs> Because my card this is the memory one. erasing. This an eight fast and furious called movies. Monster Hunter twenty twenty one. Um, yeah, it's about like uh, there's like a world of like humans and monsters, and then there's the world of like real life soldiers. I yeah, think. it's called our world. <laughs> it's and and apparently the one we inhabit right now physically. You get, you get slapped in the face by some kanji, and then you go through this lightning storm, um, which. And the lightning sword, it'll take you to the uh, to the other world, it, which is apparently the sand planet in Dune. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we were saying this last night while we were watching it. This is just a live action isekai, which is that anime genre where like a, someone from our world gets like transported to a fantasy realm, usually like a medieval fantasy realm. This is just an isekai. Um, that's not an anime trope. That's a way older yeah, I trope. I know, than but that. like it's a it's a popular genre of anime right now. Yeah. That's why I'm using the term. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought I understand was... that anime did not invent the another world concept. Yeah. Joe. I mean, you could like you can go way back, but I mean, even like as far as like big popular things, you go back to Narnia. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <Through a> closet. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> this is anime an isekai. Thing. I don't like people thinking that anime invented anything. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm. <laughs> Anime's done nothing but destroy. No, culture. it hasn't. No, it's not. Anime like invented that. tentacle rape, kind of. I don't even think that's true. I don't think that's technically I true. Think, I think Ultros did that. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, uh, one of the first comments I sent to our group chat. I had a similar comment, if you remember correctly, by the way. But go ahead. Um, I said it in the group chat, too. Oh, I was did like, you? What the fuck? What the fuck? And again? Yeah. Well, yeah. before that, I I thought it was hilarious that uh so it's a training mission or not a training mission. There's a uh, the, the Mila Jovovich is the leader of a group of um what are they Rangers, Army Rangers, is what she said. Uh big yeah. dumb big dumb loud, so probably Army Rangers according to my father, not me. That's not me saying that. <laughs> yeah. And then they're trying to find a uh their first the Alpha Squad or Bravo team or something. One of their groups of dudes that got that went MIA, right? And so they start rolling up to this area, um, and the tracks just like disappear. So it's just gone. And they're like, "Where the hell did they go?" Um, not sure. And then like they look on the horizon. There's this fucking vicious, like ridiculous storm coming. Yeah, that they didn't see before somehow. They're yeah, like, yeah. Hey, check that like, out. Completely clear blue sky, and then just like black oh, I thought it was a mountain lightning. range. Like what the fuck? Yeah, and yeah. then and then one of the comments they make is, "I wonder if the if the bad guys are using it for cover." And I'm like. <laughs> Using it for cover? What the fuck are you talking about? That thing is going to eat you alive. <laughs> like, what are they in there like? Come on, get the storm generator going. We got to hide some cover. Schweiz, that's not the beginning of the movie. 
That's, uh, are you sure? Yeah, the beginning of the movie is the bizarre. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is what I was talking about where I said the same shit that you said. It's like fucking Ron Perlman's in this movie. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck? I forgot that you had said that. Yeah, yeah. dude. It was I, in the... I got sent a picture of the character that he's supposed to be. And like, it is that fucking thing where it's like that weird anime, like Japanese trope where it's like a guy with like a lion's mane around his face, basically. Ugh. Um, And I guess the director was just like, what's the ugliest motherfucker we can hire to play this guy? <laughs> Ron Perlman. Got it. Yeah. He should have just played the cat too, but uh, cat, <laughs> cat chef. <laughs> By the way, the Palico is literally the best part of this movie for the for the eight seconds he's on screen. It was the most uncomfortable part for me. I've never played this game either. By I was the way. too tired so to I be uncomfortable. Like watching it, I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck <laughs> is up?" I ha I've barely played Monster Hunter, but like, I know, I, I know there's like scenes where like the Palicos like cook food for you, and like the whole movie, I'm screaming, "When are we gonna get to the cats that cook us food?" And they actually had that, so I was like, "All right, okay, cool." Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, don't wait for me to yawn, guys. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sums up the movie pretty well, to be fair. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, I mean, we yeah, I had to take a little break, you know, and and uh, everybody kind of was falling asleep on couches. I I had to rewind about twenty minutes of it because I woke up and I was like, "Fuck, now I'm gonna have to watch it again." <laughs> yeah. I just wake up to like little glimpses of Ron Perlman in that awful wig. And Oddly like, enough, oh, that kind of goes with the movie, considering how much uh, Mila Jovovich is knocked out in the movie. Yeah, she's like she's got some serious brain trauma in this <laughs> thing, and like I don't know how I. Uh, okay, so I I feel like Paul W S Anderson is married to Milan Jovovich. Right? I feel that's like that wife. too. I feel yeah. like that's the case. But he's like he's like he he's similar to uh I feel like he's married to I her. Feel it. I could just feel, I could feel it. <laughs> it's like the relationship that Quentin Tarantino has with Uma Thurman's feet. Is he's it? not married to Uma Thurman's feet. <laughs> he's not feet, married to Uma so Thurman's feet. I don't feel feet. like he's married to Uma But Thurman's it's like feet. an obsession. Like he's like I guess I must have my wife and I also must have her in a vehicle that's bouncing for way too long like it's a rollover scene but it's like this car was going 700 miles an hour he just <laughs> loves his wife i don't and that she's just like <laughs> everyone's bouncing around in the car it's <laughs> slow-mo it's like a minute longer than it needs to be and then they survive and then like two minutes later there's another scene where they're like running from one of the monsters and then the car gets flipped again and the same thing yeah. happens again and i was like how many times is he going to flip this bitch around in this car? Yeah, there's there's multiple things that just <laughs> repeat fuck? in this movie, and for no good reason. It's not like they repeat with variation and then like get bigger or something no. like that. It's not like, oh my god, or there's no line about, Jesus Christ, to keep on getting flipped over in cars in this fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, there's the multiple slow motion like inception shots where like they get like side swiped or some shit and they're just like hanging in midair for a second Whoa, and yeah. then and then she gets like she gets knocked out she literally gets knocked out i think it's at the act break so i think it's at the end of like i think it's at the end of act one and then in like the midpoint of the movie and at the end of act two i think she gets knocked out in those three points which is like a really bizarre thing to do. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a good way to cut to black. So that yeah. was kind of, I guess that was interesting. I mean, no, we actually start with like one of the oddest openings ever with like a ship in some clouds and s things are happening. No, the ship is like sailing through the sand. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sand. Okay. Sand that the whole it's going plan through. is sand, except for the part where it's a jungle. Yeah, uh, and uh, and then there's like a, I don't know, is it a battle? Like what the fuck is going on there? Anyway, Ron Perlman, at some point, which there was like a point where I was like, that's fucking Ron Perlman in the most ridiculous wig I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. He like grabs onto something. I don't know my ship parts. He grabs onto a rope and just like swings all the way across the ship. Yeah. You remember that? I was shit? laughing at that. Yeah. And then. Ron Perlman does not come back into the movie for an hour. Yeah, an yeah, hour. And then the movie hard cuts to these this military thing where they're out, they're out in the middle of the desert <laughs> doing, yeah. doing that shit. And and you better they, get used to you better get used to the military shit because it is the next hour of this fucking movie before we actually get to the monster hunter part. Yeah, and it's like it's like a thing where they don't take any time to really build the characters. You know what I mean? No. Like all these no. military troops are just kind of generic military. It's like generic military driver with 
blank bobbleheads yeah. bouncing on the. It's like I'm the, the Boston guy. I'm the this guy. Yeah. Like it's almost and that. And they might as well and be the bobbleheads one... because they're in the fucking they're in the car that's shaking around. With yeah, yeah. It's like what's the point of having bobbleheads? We are the bobbleheads. <laughs> <laughs> the the one guy couldn't figure out his accent. The guy they got like speared through. Um, he was like all over the place with his accent. It's like it's just like what's the point of having all these characters if you're just gonna kill them off and not give them any kind of like. Anything, you know, yeah. just what to yeah, show exactly. how brutal the stakes are. They're here. in the movie for about thirty minutes. They kill him off, so Mila Jovovich is then left alone. Yeah, and then the last guy that dies, so um, he she's helping him like walk away, and they're running away from these fucking spider creatures. She will because she wakes up in a fucking spider cocoon. She basically wakes up in like Tomb Raider twenty thirteen. She's like upside down in this horrible, dank, dark fucking cavern. Yeah, yeah, and like comes out of this fucking egg sack. It's literally some Event Horizon shit. Yeah, which and then makes sense. It's the same guy, director, but the the next one I laughed at was uh, uh, when the guy's like he like breaks down and the, his side is like bursting open from the 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 spawn of the a, spider eggs. Spider. Yeah, and he's oh, just like, fuck, you gotta get dude. out of here. It's like just such an oh. awful scene. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, no, no, it's bad. So dumb. Oh, there was something in that movie. I'm trying to remember exactly what the image was that made me like almost throw up. There was like like this movie's like pretty tame on the violence, and then there was I think it was the shit coming out of his side that was just like it was pretty gnarly. Yeah, that was the part of the movie where I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like I already don't like bugs, and forgot to see this bugs was an R-rated out of a guy's, movie. Like, like, side from these like horrible pustules is like, all right, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that was. A I, I think at that point I literally said this that, makes me want to never play Monster Hunter. That one shot was scarier than the entire Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon <laughs> yeah. City movie. Yes. Unironically, yes. God. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So he get, he dies and he poorly acts his own death. And then that's the last of the remaining survivors of her team. Um, and so basically at this point, uh, we've seen this dude whose name I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's even named, honestly, the, the Asian guy with the bow and arrow. Yeah. There's a guy that's shooting dynamite arrows at uh, monsters. And that's kind of his superpower, I guess. Um, and he, him, and Mila Jovovich fight each other because she thought they were he was attacking him, her group of dudes. So they have like a big duel that lasts like eight yeah, years. Yeah, because like he he tried to help them, and they were like, "It's obviously an enemy," and they just start shooting. Yeah, they just like like, <laughs> like like straight up just yeah, blow him over. Yeah, oh and then they have like, like with a no, with no direction from. Mila Jovovich's character at all. They just immediately open fire on this random person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and like, yeah, cool. All right. That's, that's how that would work. That spurs some like poor, a some poor Iraqi out there just getting yeah. fucking blasted. He's, he's he's little darker than white. Kill him. <laughs> yeah. Get him. Uh he's it, like it, Rufio. <laughs> it spawns this uh jaw rule fifty cent style like rivalry between the two of them for mm -hmm. About ten straight minutes, and then it re it keeps coming back, even though they've been buddies for a while. But like they fight each other forever, dude. It's like a ridiculous like mono e mono fight against these two. Um, and then they fall back in the spider pit, and then she like saves him anyway. Yeah, she saves him from the spiders because I guess you know no fate's worse than that. Um, and then she gives him chocolate, which he thinks is amazing. Uh, he's never he, yeah, he has like a crack addiction to Hershey's all of a sudden. Yeah, um, that was supposed to be kind of funny, but I was just like, eh, doesn't really matter to me. Um, and then we kind of get to where it's like, okay, this is a video game, because he's like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get one of the spiders, we're going to cut it open, we're going to get his little like poison, uh, fall asleep stuff, and we're going to use it on the big monster that killed all your friends or, or made your friends run away. And we're gonna kill him that way. So like now you're crafting items. So we can escape the rock in Dune. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because like, yeah. Because she she fucking throws a rock. Like when she wakes up, she and she's on the rock and she's surrounded by the desert. She throws a rock in the sand. And I'm like, wouldn't that be funny if that like alerted the Diablos thing that was like burying under the sand? And it just does. And I was like, I was kidding. <laughs> So yeah. that's yeah, that's why they're trapped. It's like every every little motion this thing can sense. So yeah, they haven't gonna... figured out that like sidestep and walk thing. Yeah, they know in uh, Dune. Yeah. yeah, they haven't figured out how to circle strafe. How to circle strafe? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of. Let me get a imagine. montage of them making <laughs> weapons and shit. Yeah, and then they they're crafting stuff. 
Um, the guy has like a ridiculous sword in this thing. I laughed pretty hard when I saw him. To like, be, okay, but that's like accurate the to the games, though. The games, the swords do look like that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was like, God, that looks so insane. <laughs> well, it's almost like this should never have been a live action adaptation in the first place. Because yeah, like, then you have to like put that. Ron Perlman in a fucking. It, it, you just have to cut out a fucking circle made of white hair and put it around his face. Yeah, yeah. What? What? It's like, okay, what if we made Ron Perlman? kind of look like the lion from the wizard of oz <laughs> so, <laughs> like, can you imagine that That's exactly what it looks like it looks like the cowardly lion in a fucking pirate suit yeah <laughs> say cowardly lion played by ron perlman as a pirate a sad i do pirate. believe in spooks i do i do i do believe I'm, in spooks. i will not put on an accent i'm just really good at your language <laughs> yeah it's ron, ron perlman's fucking thing oh my god yeah oh yeah do they ever explain how like why he knows how to speak english you know? because other other oh, yeah. people had visited from the world and i remember rolling my eyes into the back of my head down through the bottom and then they're coming up and popping out through my nose and then i had to pop them back into my eye sockets uh when he said yeah some other visitors from your world came in and i learned your language in perfect ron perlman <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And perfect Ron Perlman normal everyday accent. Yeah, they're like, yeah. Ron, can you maybe give yourself an accent? He's like, look. You gotta pay me $60 million. I told you that if you pay I'm my gonna... fee, I'll show up, but I didn't say I was gonna do whatever you wanted me to do. <laughs> I am gonna pass out from the fumes holding this fucking beard on my face, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <The glue. laughs> I, I can't, I can barely see let alone speak in some weird tongue. I can't open my mouth more than two inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, so bad. Uh, but yeah, he disappears forever. Um, but anyway, her and him, her and unnamed man are like crafting shit. They're making weapons. There's like a super long montage of them like prepping. And to, uh, to a person, if I just imagined for a bit, I think it was in the third act when they start using some powers. I was imagining for a bit, thinking about like not knowing this was based on a video game. Like if I were an audience member and I had no idea what the fuck Monster Hunter was, and I was coming yeah. in there, like this is the dumbest shit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ever. <laughs> like the where he's like crossing the sword to make the beam come out. Like what the fuck is this? Yeah, well, yeah, magic what now. The fuck is that? You didn't set well, that just shit wait up at all. They get to all. the five foot tall bipedal cat that like winks at them <laughs> yeah dude i fucking i've never played these games i was just like this is like i can recognize though that i'm like okay this is some dumb shit for the actual video game and it can work in a video game it ain't working here man <laughs> yeah. like it i mean we did immediately start with crazy so i guess like in a way <laughs> yeah like, like the movie starts with some like asian chick looking through like a, a an eyeglass and like muttering some weird shit she's like making some sound it's like she's like Tourette's and autism smashed into one. It's like she's doing something. I can't remember what it was. I she's just like looking, and then it does the like. She's connecting to the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's got the old dial-up. Yeah. So I mean, it starts with crazy with the ship on the sand. So I guess it has like a setup for this shit, but it's weird though. It's like yeah. the most bizarre. Like, like it doesn't mesh. Like the world of like these these human characters and then these ridiculous weapons and then these little, these powers and nothing's set up really. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of hilarious, but, um, but you know, clearly shot like the cinematography was excellent. The cinematography was so much better in this movie than in the last movie. <laughs> you could see, you could see well, because things. It had like, the, like it's good, the, it's like the polar opposite. Whereas, whereas Welcome to Raccoon City is set in like nothing but darkness. This movie is just set in blaring sunlight. <laughs> yeah, it's blaring sunlight, but for like a reason because you know it's no, the I desert, know, but still, it, yeah, it, it, you know, you can see the definition even in the shadows. Like you can see the definitions there, definition yeah. there, and like, Raccoon City is set in the closet underneath my stairs with the lights off <laughs> and this one is like <laughs> although in the i China will say the face. fucking um the pacing in the beginning of this movie is like actually i guess for the whole fucking thing this movie is just like fucking rapid fire pace like they do not it give is. you it, any I, time to breathe i think it might be a little too fast but it is yeah. it's way too fast yeah. especially when we have these like five or six military characters that just immediately get killed anyway yeah, yeah. and then the same exact thing happens at the very end against the raffalos or whatever um yeah, because at a certain point she does get knocked out again after finally defeating that monster, right? 
and then uh, something like that. Yeah. And then she me- then she's like a prisoner of Ron Perlman and crew. Yeah, Ron Perlman punches her in the face. Remember, he's like, she's like, oh, you can speak my oh, language. That was it. He's yeah. like, yeah, don't get too excited. <gasps> <gasps> ah, I do remember that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she blacks out. Yeah, that's the other blackout. Lots of uh, head trauma for Mila Jovovich in this yeah. one, um, and also zero g trauma in rolling vehicles of, of death and pain. Yep, that no one actually dies in, but. Yeah, this movie's oddly not exploitative of Mila Jovovich at all, unlike some previous work. Yeah, which is kind of lame. But, yeah, I, mean. I was like, come on, if you if you got a hot wife, you got to show off the hot wife. It's like, no, she's going to be like a tough military gal and dirty. Yeah, she's getting kind of... <laughs> he, he's reading the room. He knows that we can't do exploitative anymore. Like, you couldn't release that kind of shit today. <laughs> yeah, he's also like, plus she's getting kind of old. So she is... Like, her old is still way better than most people young, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to complain. And I don't I, know how old she is now. I think she's, wait, she's, I think she's like 40-something, because she yeah. was born in like the 70s. But Because yeah. I looked this up, but she's, not she's still a solid age. Yeah. yeah. Still, like at worst. Still quite attractive, and you could have yeah. exploited that in the movie, and you didn't. Yeah, what a pussy. As, Come on. She's covered in soot. What kind of like a husband are you? And all this shit, but she still has perfect fucking white teeth. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. I mean, she yeah. she t- took care of herself in the military base. She has some perfect. White Plus, hair. I think the last time they tried to exploit her, it was like ultraviolet, and that movie is not good. So, <laughs> I learned their lesson. Um, yeah, and then she eventually like convinces them that she can help them, like she could be part of the crew, basically, with that one other guy that she befriended, and then they teach her how to use the swords, and then like figure out the powers. Yeah, so it's a training montage, Rocky style. With, yeah. Like, suddenly, oh, if I, like, do this, if I cross the swords like this and go, frink, and then suddenly, like, sp- explosion goes out in front of me, which uh, works in a video game, sure. It wouldn't work yeah. even in that context. Like, you wouldn't have a scene of that, but no. uh, that power. I mean, I can, work, at least, but... I can at least give him credit for, like, keeping a lot of that stupid horse shit in the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And she's on this ship now that was in the beginning of the end. There, there's a fucking cat cook. Yeah, Palico. What the? F- why do you keep on saying Palico? Is that what the name? That's what they're called. Oh, that's the okay in the games. That's what they're called. Yes. Okay. That's why he said she's like, "What is that?" And the, and the the guy with no name that she befriends in the movie, he's like Palico. Yeah, and it is like it came out of an animated Pixar movie. It was just <laughs> shoved into this live action film, which, by the yep. way, has very cool looking, like the big monster and everything like that. Very good special effects. Very cool looking, I think. Um, but then that cat came from a fucking cartoon. Like, yeah. it, just, it just came it's, from a different movie. It's like they're yep. Square Enix with cats that just don't really know what they look yeah, like. What is a cat? Like, they've heard about cats, <laughs> but they're not quite sure what. Is a cat. They put all <laughs> Japan put all the and cats yeah, the, on the island. Yeah, the special effects on the big monsters w- look great, which is a shame because it's Monster Hunter, so they don't have like any recognizable designs at all. So yeah, Isle of Dogs gave Japan a real bad name, so they made Isle of Cats as well, just to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that's the history of that. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so they just don't quite know what a cat looks like. That's really <laughs> what we're going for here. That's for the Chinese, the enemies yeah. across the sea. <laughs> now, in fact, if one of the if one of the things from Isle of Dogs was like spliced into this movie, it would look more realistic than that cat. It actually would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the cat looked really, really out of place. <laughs> it's like the little like running elephant thing in uh, in uh, Kung Pao. You know, they spent a bunch of money. Oh on my it, god! Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's such a random poll. Yeah, oh, it's, it's like perfect. everything else is real except for this one thing. It's very not except for real. this one thing that's in the shot for four <laughs> seconds to just freak you the fuck out. For a minute. <laughs> it's like we don't even focus on it. It's just like, wait, did I just see that? Like, <laughs> yeah, um, like Catman. Now, now I'm just imagining uh, talking George Clooney dog walking into this movie for a half second. <laughs> talking George Clooney dog. Yeah, he said if Isle of Dogs was in this movie, it would oh, look more realistic. Oh. Uh, I love Dial Dogs. Yeah, um, Dial Dogs is great. Alex hated it. That's that's the good Paul Anderson. That's Paul uh, Paul I W Anderson. Yeah, that's the other Paul Anderson. Yeah, the, they're not related. Everybody looks that up. I know because if you type in one person's name, it is Paul, and then Paul W Anderson is Paul Anderson. Oh, God damn, I can't do it. 
now I can't I can't even say their names. Paul W. S. Anderson and then like the next one related to Wes Anderson. Like that that's where it'll go. It's funny. Um, Wait, so he made the good director change his name no. from Paul? Uh, like you need to be known by your middle name. I'm Paul. Wait, am I getting confused? Oh, Paul now? Thomas what the fuck? Anderson. Sorry, Paul Thomas Anderson, Wes Anderson, and Paul Paul W. S. Anderson. Paul Th- sorry. Paul Thomas Anderson. That's um that's uh oh my god. Licorice Pizza, the new one, uh Boogie Nights and fucking fucking There Will Be Blood. That's yeah. Paul Thomas Anderson. Wes okay. Anderson is Isle of Dogs and uh Bottle Rocket and um uh hotel fantastic mr fox yeah fantastic mr fox uh budapest hotel grand budapest hotel uh moonrise kingdom all that yeah. indie shit yeah so both of those guys are like oscar nominated big time lots of people love their movies kind of deal uh paul ws anderson is avp <laughs> mortal <laughs> <Yeah>. combat <laughs> those are the good days <laughs> avp that was my peak oh my god so yeah all three of them are getting uh getting mixed up in the head what is your dog a dream? <laughs> That's my dog. Sorry, I didn't know if you could hear that or not. What the fuck is that sound? She's barking in her sleep. Yeah, dog. tell her to shut up. Yeah, tell her <laughs> yeah. to shut up wow. in your sleep. Go, de- go, 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 incept her dream. <laughs> As you fall backwards towards the floor. No, oh, yeah. Then man. I go in her dream, and it's just Isle of Dogs, and I'm like, well, this is this is dark. Yeah, but everyone looks like Mila Jovovich. It's like Isle of Dogs, but it's humans, and they're all Mila oh, Jovovich. God, instead. I literally just picked. Mila Jovovich's head on like a dog's body, like on all fours. Nice. And you're like, man, Ugh. my dick should not have twitched at that. <laughs> <laughs> Yet it did. I'm getting <laughs> like... a very confused boner right now. My dick is doing loop de loops. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> what happens in the climax of this movie? I know she's training. I don't know. They're training for something. They're training to take on the uh, Raffalos. Uh, and he does the, he does, Paul Anderson does the thing that, um, that Uva Bowl, the sin that Uva Bowl does. Because as he's like, he, Ron Perlman says, like, Raffalos. And then, like, there's a weird little montage of, like, a fucking, like, ancient looking book with, like, <laughs> info on the Raffalos. And I'm like, is this, like, from the game? Is that, like, your, like, bestiary or whatever? Like, and you're pulling it open? I like, think he does so, the yeah. thing. He does the Uva Bowl thing where it's, like, cut to the game. <laughs> No, I don't think it's cutting to the game, but it's like... No, it's not cutting to the game, but it's like, look, here's a thing from the game. Here's your little book of shit of Raffalos, the enemy. And I'm like, why would Mila Jovovich have the information on the Raffalos? Like, did she see this other guy's, like, notes on the bad guys? Like, is he, like, a Probably during the montage, and it was just never explained. Yeah. Like, set up. Something. It was just really bizarre and bowl, bowl bowl-like. Um... (laughs) There, there's, there's, here's the deal. Uva Bowl is, I'm sorry, Paul W.S. Anderson is Uva Bowl with like techni- a hot wife. technical <laughs> skill. <laughs> with technical skill. And a hot wife. And a hot wife. You got to have both. You can't just have one of them. I don't two. know if Uva Bowl has a hot wife or not. I have no idea. I, yeah, I hope he does. I, I hope, hope he's he doing does, well. Yeah. Yeah, just, well I want to go let's to his restaurant. Find out. Uva Bowl wife. Let's, I want to go to his restaurant. See if we can get him on. Get him on the show. Get him on the program. Good idea. Good idea. Um, you want to go to Canada? <laughs> I know he like didn't he retweet one of our he episodes did, yeah. or some shit. He did. It was pretty funny. I was like, Come on. I I don't listen. Had, just don't listen to. I it. wish you had fans, like enough fans, where that would actually help us out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'd be helping him though. We'd be do a guy a favor. You know, <laughs> he's given us all these titties over the years. To be fair, we have spent a large amount of money on his fucking movies, and he's yeah. getting a cut of all that shit. Like we bought all these movies, rented these movies. Yeah, some of them were used. Sometimes he's not so, getting a cut, but he doesn't need to know. Well, that. I don't know if he's getting a cut, but he's probably getting a cut from some of them. So, you know. And we're supporters, you know. We yeah, just, no, we just that, need to go to his fancy restaurant. Yeah, there you go. Um, see if it tastes as shitty no, as his movies. <laughs> but, but what's interesting is like Paul W. S. Anderson is not. It, Michael Bay is kind of like this too, but Michael Bay like has a personal style. I don't really think W. S. Anderson has a like a style that you can like no. pinpoint. Unlike the other, uh, his and, wife uh, is pretty hot, by the way. Uva Bowl's wife. Oh, oh, okay, well, I'll have to I'll have to Google that. Uh, <laughs> you now Google Uva Wy- Uva Bowl wife topless. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be for later. Natalie um, Bowl topless. Let's go. Safe search off. 
Uh, I don't know. But then again, I'm using DuckDuckGo, so um, it wasn't going to give me the right thing anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah. He did. He did well for himself. Okay. Um, the uh, what the fuck were we talking about? I was this Paul movie Anderson that style. barely has a plot. Uh, Paul they, Anderson they fight style. The no, 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 In the no, middle no, no, no. of like the fucking the, the place where the stones are that the lightning sends you back to the world. Sorry, let me finish my thought real quick. Paul W. Anderson doesn't really have a style, but he does have something similar to Uwe Boll, which is like chaotic camera placement. Yeah. And yeah. like, but the thing is, I think he's just a way better editor than Uwe Boll is. I think it's maybe not like the camera placement is probably like he finds shots that he thinks are good. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't just place them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. There's like, it is there's a similarity there between him and Uva Bowl, but the reason like Paul W. S. Anderson's movies are better is because he does actually like try harder in the other aspects. As far as the blocking is concerned, yeah, there's a similarity there for sure. Um But it is a lot of chaos. Like in the fight scenes, like when she's fighting with the guy, there's like a million cuts. Um just going like rapid fire. It's like the it's like the fight scenes in Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It was just like, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on, and the sound design's good, and the special effects are good, and it's kind of covering up the fact that... Uh, and, and the editing is rapid enough where you're not really able to see it, the fact that probably the fighting is kind of lame. Um, but uh, they're able to kind of sell it through montage. Uh, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's some similarities there. Paul W. Sanderson's not really like a very stylized or specific kind of director yeah not uh, a, not, yeah. A, not everyone could be like that Villeneuve guy or whatever his name is Denis the, Villeneuve yeah uh although the later Game of Thrones did a, quite a bit of stuff that was kind of like they had that. better directing later on like season six like the writing kind of started to falter yeah but then the directing got way better yeah and the, of course the budgets got way better too and so they were able to afford more things so they could see more things and yeah anyway. like the Battle of the Bastards kind of reminds me of his movies a little bit. There's like a lot of like. That's a well directed uh, piece of television, Battle yeah. of the Bastards. But none of these movies are nearly as impressive as any of that guy's movies. So no. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the fucking Revenant, like the just the fight, the one like big ass fight they have in that. That Revenant's like... not that guy. Oh, it's not. That's not Denis Villeneuve. Really? Wait, which one? Uh, which that's one Alejandro Inurito is the Revenant. Oh, wait, which one am I thinking of then? What's his movie? His movies? uh. Arrival is one of his. Prisoners is one of his. Enemy is one of his. Sicario is one of his. Dune, all mm. those are Denis Villeneuve. Oh, I'm okay. Of the other guy then. I'm thinking of the guy with like the who does the like huge shots where it's like. It's like one camera move. It's not a bunch of cuts. It's just like uh, we're gonna do this. for Inuritu did that for two movies. So is one of them Birdman. Birdman's one of them. That's the guy I'm thinking. And of. then the other is one he is he the guy that did 1917? Doesn't that movie do that? That movie does do that. That it's is him, Sam. Sam Mendes. Sam Mendes, uh, who directed Skyfall and Spectre. Oh, okay. And uh, American Beauty, which is an amazing movie. That was his first movie, which is fucking amazing first movie. Um. Like Road to Perdition and some other movies. Oh, a Jarhead. He he directed Jarhead as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. All all really good filmmakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mix those two guys up, I guess. I don't know how. I really like the Villeneuve guy though. His movies are good. Yeah, I have the I've only not seen one of his movies. Enemy, a lot of people don't really like Enemy. I liked Enemy a lot. It's like the it's like the Jake Gyllenhaal, like two Jake Gyllenhaal in a movie and then he like sees like a spider it's such a weird art film it's so bizarre <laughs> it's, it's bizarre but i liked it it was like moody and cool um that was an earlier film of his but he did like some school shooting movie that's in like quebecois and i i haven't seen that one but uh all, oh, just like uva bull all but one of his movies i've seen um it's one of a bull made a school shooting movie called rampage which is oddly enough not based on the video game <laughs> yeah okay go figure yeah Wow. Something in the air in Quebec. <laughs> yeah, those Canadians are fantasizing about all our school shootings down here. <laughs> <laughs> they wish they could be us. Yeah, but you're lame. But they gave all their guns away to that fruity prime minister of theirs. Yeah, and his stupid mounted guards. Lame. Oh, they're the Mounties. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's just piss off all of our Canadian listeners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have no opinions on anything Canadian. Yeah. I've never been there. I don't pay attention to Canadian stuff. Yeah, uh, same. I mean, I watch some Canadian YouTubers. Uh, enjoy that. Uh, uh, my favorite, my favorite Canadian related thing is the way that South Park depicts Canada. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best thing culturally to come out of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't come from Canada. But. They have, like, square wheels on their cars. It's just so stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. What did, Canadian, what, did, what did Canada give us? What did Canada give us? They gave us Justin Bieber They and gave Rush. us Justin Bieber. They gave hey, us... Hey, Rush um, is fine. Dude. They gave us uh, the woman who sings the Titanic theme, whose name is... Celine Dion. Me. Celine Dion. They gave us Celine Dion. Uh, they gave us the Birthday Massacre. I like that band, so... There's okay. that. All right. All right. See, we're working up there. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Peterson. Peterson. Yeah, I like Jordan Peterson. Probably the shining Canadian. Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, he's skipping down the street. Oh. <laughs> Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Dude, I shared that shit on social media. That was fun. I like made some clips and put them in my Instagram stories and got some like a bunch of little smiley faces. It was good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh yeah this this movie ends no <laughs> it does end that is true yeah it ends finally uh but it ends with like a teaser as if there's going to be another one <laughs> uh, she she gets sent back to our uh. world uh but the rathalos follows her so you get to see a fucking rathalos fight like a helicopter or something like seven helicopters in a yeah. row and kill them all um and again, yeah, right before they escapes to our world, we get a bunch of nameless um, soldiers in the old, the other world that get just annihilated immediately as well. And so you're like, man, there's like, the stakes seem like they would be high, but really they're not because we're not losing anybody we give a shit about. Ron Perlman's still alive, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, Mila Jovovich is still alive. Dude who doesn't have a name. The cat, I assume, <laughs> is still alive. <laughs> it's like we're good, you know, the nothing. pirate. Yeah. I am a pirate cat. Hurrah <laughs> 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 for the pirate what if all cat. The cats and cats it is, it like is a glorious thing. thing to be a pirate cat. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a glorious thing to be a pirate cat. Would that would that improve the movie Cats if they all looked like that? Yeah. So would the soundtrack to Pirates of Penzance. Uh, e- mm. Man, none of us really remember how this movie ends, huh? <laughs> no. Um, it ends with them killing the Rathalos. I mean, yeah, but... It, it was a happy ending. <laughs> and then... Oh, no, she gets, like, picked up, right? By the army? Yeah, they pick her up and they resurrect her and save her. She's, she's knocked out again. Yeah, she gets knocked out again. <laughs> and she's I think she's just flying through the... Air? Didn't that get, plane get attacked too? Dude, I don't remember this thing. Dude. I think it did. I don't remember the ending of this. I movie. just watched this. The, like you watched this last night. I, I finished it dude, less I, than I twelve hours ago. I watched this less than ago. twenty-four hours ago. I do not remember how it ends. <laughs> it had like a happy ending, like she was alive, but like shit was still going down. So like there was well, sequel. the was like followed her through the portal, and then like she had to kill it by doing the 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 slashy slash move or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. Oh my god. <sighs> Like, Joe doesn't remember the ending of this movie because he saw it, like, a bit longer ago than we did. Yeah, I saw it. And like you and me were just falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, I was very tired. Black Dragon. Yeah, me too. He notes that as long as the portal remains open, there will always be the threat that monsters will pass through the Earth. Artemis concludes that finding a way to take down the Sky Tower is now their primary objective. Um, In the mid-credits scene. Did you guys oh, stick man, around that Oh, man, I didn't even watch shit? the <laughs> credits. <laughs> No, I think it was. What is with a, all these mid credit scenes? Fuck you, Marvel. Like, think, why you got to do that? I think it was a. Um, I think it was a teaser for a sequel. It was probably because that's also what Uncharted does. Except in the case of Uncharted, they're teasing the movie that they should have just made the first time. Um, well, we'll talk about that next week. I have no idea. What you're yeah, I know. About. I'm just saying. I, I like, love all watching these video game based be... movies on games that I've never played. So no, you uh, exclusively fucking, uh, Resident, do that. I'm pretty sure Resident Evil also had a had a teaser scene. Oh, it like did. It had an Ada teaser. Wong teaser scene. Oh, yeah, yeah a, that's right. Mr. Kennedy, I don't remember what she said, but <laughs> no, she 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 gets she helps Wesker, but like Wesker's like extremely like 
susceptible to sunlight, which is why he has to wear the shades. Yeah. It, which is hilarious because it's like, why would you need sunglasses in a world so dark? You could barely see anything yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, great. Now I'm just not going liter- to literally be blind now because there's no light. And I have to wear these sunglasses because I'm sensitive yeah. to the very little light that there is. That's funny. Yeah. Ever. That's funny. Um, yeah. Well, how'd you guys feel about this movie overall? It was kind of boring. Considering yeah. how much action was in there, it was kind of boring. Like, like it doesn't oh. help that I already don't give a single shit about Monster Hunter. Yeah, I played like, one. On I the can't PSP imagine the like fans seconds. were really losing their minds over this thing. They were certainly weren't losing any money, uh, <laughs> as far as we can tell. It lost. So. Uh, yeah, I. Um, now the comparison is always easy to make here that uh, anything is better than the Resident Evil movie I saw a couple months ago. Um, and then we talked about last week, Ra- Raccoon Shitty. Uh, Raccoon Shitty. Um, I would honestly argue this movie's worse. I think this movie is not a good movie. Um, but but it had entertainment value, and it was there were things about it on the filmmaking side of things that were like well done, like the the cinematography, which I've talked about, and then also like. Special effects were pretty good for how, like, it's not that big. Like, it's a mid-budget movie, and the monsters look great. Yeah. Um, now, the story is really dumb. <laughs> uh, the story's almost non-existent. S- Schweiss was right. Some of the, some of the acting of, of some of the characters that are killed off really early are really bad, and the writing is also not very good there, so it might not necessarily be the performers. But, uh, but Mila Jovovich, like, holds the fort down, and... Um, the action scenes are, um, you know, they're they're kind of mediocre on the mediocre end of, of things, but uh, they're certainly not bad. Like, they're not embarrassingly bad. So this, this movie just runs into, like, the totally forgettable, but not a horrible waste of time. But, you know, I should have probably watched a different movie. Yeah. yeah. I was going to watch a movie. <laughs> Dude, uh, this thing was in one eye and out the other. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you were saying Resident Evil's a four, I'm like, this is about a four. This, I would also agree. This is a four. For Resident sure. Evil for me is a fucking one, <laughs> but you know, yeah, that's just me. Yeah, um, like I said, I think it's very boring and pretty bland. I mean, Ron Perlman was kind of funny, but he was just funny because he was awful. It's funny because he's in there. Yeah, and he's well, because it's like don't the, don't these games take place in like a bunch of crazy biomes? But like all we get is fucking sand. <laughs> well, they this is lo- one location, man. They can spend more money on the special effects, which they clearly except did. for when they go camping at night and there's like a jungle all of a sudden. I I don't even remember, dude. I don't even remember that shit. I don't remember. I barely do too, but I remember like there was randomly trees at some point. I'm like, oh, cool. It's like a different color on screen. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I think it's pretty boring. I think it tries to stick to the games as far as I can tell. Um, I thought the crafting thing was kind of cool, but like I'm in that kind of crafty mood, you know, with the Conan coming back and like all those things. You're so. a very crafty man. Yeah. Really not, not at all, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm into the idea of crafts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that was kind of cool, and that's something that the game does. Like you have to get pieces from the enemies to like use to make weapons and shit like that. Um, that was I, the joke I made. I'm like, man, they're having this much they're having this much trouble taking down like a Diablo or whatever. It's gonna suck when they have to fight forty more of this fucking thing to get the whole like armor set. Yeah, yeah. Or when they run across uh, near Gigante. Uh, you said that totally. on the voice chat, and I also made that same joke. We're watching the movie. I'm like, I really want to see if they try to pronounce near Gigante. Yeah, say it. Say it out loud. Not in your head. No, not in your head. I know what you're thinking. Say it. <laughs> the craziest I don't know what thing Gigante looks like. I just know the name. Yeah. The craziest thing about that reference to our podcast is that is I'm. I mean, I think that's the only time the N word has ever been uttered on this I've podcast. I've said it. I've said it. Oh, you have? Yeah. Uh. uh <laughs> no, I'll tell you. The context is uh, that on a review for. Um, it was UFF, U- right? UFF. I uh, so on the on the networks. Sorry, so it's not on this show. There was a review on UFF from angry ass black dude, and it said the n word in it, and I read it out loud. Uh oh, there's gonna be a compilation, and Spotify is <laughs> gonna take down half of your episodes. 
No, which Joe will be fine until he starts suggesting yeah, that which the, ones uh, I'll the do virus it. isn't real. Then there will be a compilation. Which ones? I'll do it. If you take down all of... If you can cancel Super Sexy, please. Joe will say it right now. <laughs> <laughs> context free. <laughs> like, no, there's a context there. I guess the context is ruin me. <laughs> ruin me as you like goatsy open your asshole for them to... Yeah. No, nah, I might have said it more than once in in context of a quote. I I don't think. I mean, I'm never gonna say that word out loud outside of the context of a quote, but I have said it in context of like this is what he said. He said this exactly this. Yeah, uh, I I just think that's the one time on the show that it's ever been said like just randomly, and it wasn't one of us. And no, I was freaking it, out and laughing super hard. When I, he remember, said it. I remember. I remember. And it's in, on that. It's on two episodes because you compiled it. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's on, on a best, best of. of yeah. yeah, we need to do those again. Best of 2022, 2020. That's for other people to deal with. <laughs> no, the other, the ones that the others did, I appreciate what they did, but I think we have funnier moments than those. So personally, I think it'd be better if I did it. Okay. But then well, it would be for me to laugh at because it's what I think <laughs> is the funniest. Which is I don't know if that's necessarily true, but you know what I mean. Like what they did was awesome, but I was like, man, there were some that year that I remember were hilarious moments that no one no one asked for. Yeah. Like to It's just, tough, man. Every... It's a lot of hours of shit that pulled cold through. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's some great episodes back in the day. Yeah. The only thing that would like would help is like if we did it weekly after the episode was done. If, like, you re-listened to it and then, like, wrote down notes on a physical piece of paper and then at the end of the year you have it all there and then you just, like, grab the clip. I could probably start doing that. Yeah, you should. I do listen to that. I think the best stuff would be super fun. A couple weeks, you know, a few weeks off at the beginning of the year, kind of, like, rest, relax. Yeah. Coming to the new year, not doing the... Doing, like, a Conan Exiles. Yeah, Conan Exiles time. That's a good time to... You do it per quarter. Yeah, quarter I one, too, best yeah. of. Quarter one, 2016, best of. Oh, we could start having like best of compilations that just like pop in for when we miss an yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll start doing that when I yeah. listen back. I'll just take just notes. Go through the first uh, three months of episodes and put something together. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, all right, guys. Well, anybody else have anything else to say about this movie? Because I've, I've, <laughs> I've said all I, ha- I have to say. Um,. Yeah, just way too many it car exists. rolls, car rolling scenes. Uh, Ron Perlman is just crazy, zany in this movie. Uh, how many Ron Perlman? How many times have we had Ron Perlman? Is it just twice? It's just twice, but the fact is that we went from the Dungeon Siege Tale movie to this one, and we had no idea that Ron Perlman was in this movie. Yeah, that's right. Because it's only Mila Jovovich that's shown, and then like suddenly the hard cut open to Ron Perlman in a ridiculous wig. Yeah. <laughs> So. Mila Jovovich is definitely the most p- prominent actress or actor or whatever in all of these movies that we were reviewing. Other than, like, I don't really think there's that many other repeat actors, you know, outside of maybe sequels to other movies where they come back. Um, yeah. No. That's I weird. I never thought about that. All right, guys. Well, that's probably going to be it for this episode of Nude Clan. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us. And next week, we will be reviewing the brand new film, or at least when we're recording this. I realize these go out a month after. Uh, Do you? <laughs> Uncharted, the 2022 action adventure film. It'll it'll be on it'll be on demand by the time the episode comes out, probably. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, you can all watch it. That's right. And. Uh, we all saw it, and we're all going to talk about it. So Yeah, come hang out for that, and check out the new episode of Ultima. We just released a uh, Chocobo's Dungeon 2 review, so go listen to that. And um, check out all other shows, you know, Ultima Final Fantasy. Check the out Ultima the YouTube, Ultima check out the Final Patreon, y- oh, Togib. Check out your wallet com. and look at it and say, how much of this do I owe these people? It's not yeah, so much how much content. do they deserve. How much do I owe? And not a single ad, <laughs> not even for uh, Planet Fitness, which is a joke from two weeks ago, or Papa John's, which is a joke from next week. Uh, fucking... <laughs> or or uh, Chicken Coop. Never, or never once coop. advertised, please help the yeah. Kickstarter campaign on that. Yeah, no one's ever harvested thousands of email addresses um, without, per- without permission and uh, sent out requests. I didn't do that this please. time around at all. Oh, you didn't? No. I never had to. 
Nice. Is it because you could, didn't have the files anymore? <laughs> no, it wasn't oh, okay. that. I mean, there was a part where I was like, oh, if I send this out, I'm going to be sending it out to some people who had like auditioned for parts and didn't get them. Mm. And I was like... Should have done it. Not going to do like, that. Like, hey, do you want to pay for it? You can't be in it, but you can <laughs> certainly give me money. So I was like, if I do this automated thing where it takes every email I've ever emailed or been received mail from and like, boop, 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 it like sorts it, and then I put it in a mailing list, like it's not... Nice. So I had a mailing list that people opted into, and that was the only mailing list I used. And then it's Facebook friends of mine and people that were in my DMs on Instagram. And then... um that was it. I was gonna go like further than that, but we raised the money. So yeah, yeah. So thanks you guys for yeah, helping. Thank you. Uh, and You're of welcome. course, of course, annoyed the shit out of every single listener on this podcast. So <laughs> and every single <laughs> listener on any of my podcasts about week about after it. week. Month after so month. I guess that was another part of the the money raising. But um, yeah. yeah, hopefully we're doing okay during the filming. This while this is out, <laughs> when this comes out. Um. Anyway. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Till next time, live always in the nude. Walk with your palico held high. Fuck. Oh. No! <laughs> no, that's the episode. That's where your crossover is.